In this week's Photoshop tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to do fake reflections onto your car lights in Photoshop. So hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop tutorial. My name is Manny and you can find me on Facebook at Rita Pro. In today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to do fake reflections onto your car lights. It's actually a very easy technique to do, but you need to know what you're doing with it. Also, we're going to work with the pen tool, some normal layers with some masks and some blending options. And also with the mask, we're going to brush those out with some gradients and just refine everything a little bit. So yeah, let's get right away into the tutorial. Okay, so over in Photoshop, you guys can see again my end result already. Let's actually turn this off so I can show you guys the before and after. This is the before and after over here. Have a look at the reflections here at the top and here at the bottom. So there we go, before and after, before and after. So I want to show you guys quickly how to do these simple uh, highlights and these reflections here with a few simple techniques. Also, if you're interested to know how more about how to build these images, have a look in a few tutorials back. I've explained exactly how I go about the process of creating these images. As you guys can see, here's a little build up again until my final result with color lights and pop and then lastly just the reflections yeah and then i am done then my final image great so let's go into this and start with this right away i want to start talking about where you can actually place some high lines and also the reflections so let's maybe just change the brush and the brush color to something vibrant so you guys can see it okay so firstly what i look out for is maybe let's turn off this and this as well I'm just going to create an empty new layer. So I have a really highlight, a big highlight of here, big reflection. You can see this white reflection over here. So this would most probably continue. Also, it could start from somewhere over here. So I keep on looking at my image and try to find areas where it would actually suit the image. So I could start maybe over here, going all the way over here, and then continuing over here. So that would be a really uh, extreme reflection for me, a big highlight. And then also here at the bottom, we could add in a soft one going all the way over. So this area over here, and that would also maybe continue from this highlight here, going all the way over to this one, okay, creating like kind of a little reflection here. Let's actually turn this off and turn this one on so you guys can see the effect over here. So it kind of looks like the light traveled all the way and then ended somewhere smoothly over here and just helps to make that whole composition look nice on your light image as well. Okay, I'm going to turn this off again. Also one more thing here at the bottom, you guys can see here's a big huge reflection and it just kind of looks weird cutting off like this. So I would like to actually extend this a bit and let it bleed over the car body as well. So that's I want to show you guys how to do these simple steps and yeah, let's get right away into that. I'm going to delete the layer, create a new one and we're just going to start with that. So firstly, I'm going to go over with the pen tool Okay, select the pen tool and I'm just going to put an anchor point over here. You can also zoom in a bit closer and going right away along these lines here. Okay, and a little bit further. Also, if you're completely new to the pen tool, have a look. There's a tutorial on the channel teaching you how to work with the pen tool. Now, this is totally up to you how far you go with that reflection. I might just go over to here. Okay, and then slowly bring it back just with um, the same thickness as we have over here. So this you can either do with guidelines or create some more helplines. I'm going to do this freehand now so that it looks a bit sloppy, obviously, because I'm doing this a bit quicker. So take a bit more time when you do this. Okay, remember again, if you're new to the pen tool, check out the pen tutorial. Then again, I'm going to continue with this. Okay, this one I can push down a little bit and a bit more with the anchor points one more and then just continue my line over here i'm going to zoom in a bit closer so i can bring this completely on the edge okay and again just with the pen tool moving these edges over okay and then i'm going to hit the pen tool again right click inside of that path make a selection out of the path zero feathering okay and then selecting the marking tool right click inside of that selection and say fill Fill with white foreground color, OK, and Command D, get out of the selection. So first of all, I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to have a look if this works for me. It's obviously a bit quicker. My previous one was better. As you guys can see, it had a longer line, so made this a little bit thinner, actually. 
So this one is quite thick. And the previous one was a bit longer. So like I said, take a bit more time when you guys do this. Okay, so this is the first highlight. And also now what I normally do is I compare it against the other highlights. Is it too strong or do I need to duplicate this effect to make it even more brighter? But if it's completely white, it should be bright enough. So what you do with here with this layer one, I'm just going to say ref. Okay, let's just go back into this. I'm just going to rename this reflection one. So if in case it's too hard, then you can just take the opacity down a little bit. So it helps to bleed in with the second one over here. Okay, so something like 90. But what I would also do for this tutorial is now I would actually replicate exactly this highlight and then also brighten this up a little bit more. So I'm going to create another layer over here, go back in with the pen tool, and I'm literally going to do this really quick now. And just on that highlight already, I will also make another path and just replicate that again. So this might take a little bit, okay? And as I mentioned before, like if you knew, with the pen tool, practice a bit or have a look here at my pen tool tutorial and you can learn a bit more of how to work with this. Okay, let's extend this a bit further, all the way to here. So I'm kind of rebuilding this little highlight. Okay, a little bit more and continue the path, complete it. Okay, I'm gonna hit right click as well here, say make a selection, accept the zero feathering, zoom out a little bit. M for the marking tool on the keyboard, it's always good to know those keyboard shortcuts. And inside of the selection, hit right click and say fill again with white. Okay, command D, and you can now see this is a bit stronger towards this one because obviously we took down the reflection. One here, we took down the opacity a bit. So let's take that down as well to 90%. So I try to enhance them a bit and make them a bit stronger. So that's why I'm duplicate or creating another one on here. And that's my first step that I do now with some areas here of the light. Also, if you want to enhance these a bit more, as you guys can see over here, it's fading out a little bit and fading out here a bit and getting stronger. You can also replicate and rebuild these here in order for you to make them look really, really nice and really, really strong. And also obviously a bit sharper and if you see something like this to make it one defined line instead of having these cutoffs here. Okay, so that's my first step that I do. Then the second would be over here, again, a new empty layer. I always start with the empty layers. You can also do it afterwards. Reflection three, this would be now again with the pen tool also creating a bit of a direction here with the soft reflection actually. So not so much the high line. Okay, what I will do is just also select the pen tool, P on the keyboard, and I'm just gonna put an anchor point here and somewhere over here. And this is the reason why I do this is just to see where with with this reflection continue. So then I can hold command on the keyboard, move this around a little bit. And also I'm working with a Mac. If you're on a Windows uh, computer, please press control when I say command. Okay, somewhere over here, and I'll just go with the normal move tool to drag down a guideline. So this will be my point over here to start. Now inside of the pen tool, I'm just gonna hit escape. And I know this is my point to start with, okay. First anchor point is set. Now I'm just gonna continue roughly freehand as well. Please take a bit more time when you guys do this. Okay, something like so, maybe a little bit more and slowly up. And I'm just gonna go right away into here. Maybe I'm gonna go step back actually with the pen tool to select the last anchor point, delete that. Select this anchor point, put one over here and I'm right away going to build a rough reflection like that so it goes up into there. Okay, then Continue, hold Alt, select this area over here from the pen tool, move it all the way down, and now inside of our old reflection, we can basically just come back with our new reflection down below. Okay, let's actually do this a bit more to take this down, okay, and continue here with the pen tool. So do quite a lot just with the pen tool itself. A bit more, a bit more, okay, and continue that last piece over here, like so. Great, then again, hit right click, make a selection, accept the zero feathering, and M for marking tool, and right click this time again, and say fill as well, also with white. Okay, command D, get out of the selection again, Windows people, remember control D for you, 
I'm going to take the guidelines here or just go to view and say clear guides. Okay, great. So this is obviously the reflection three, which is now on top of our high line. So we need to take this a layer down. And now what I'm going to do is just take the opacity all the way down until I'm happy and until it looks good with my previous reflection here. Turn that up a little bit. I'm going to zoom out a bit. So this is up to you and this might be different for every single image. Okay, great. I'm going to keep it with that. And now sometimes it does look good, sometimes not. So what I do then is create another mask in here just with a little mask icon down here. And then I go into the gradient tool and select again a white to black gradient. You can also start uh, black to white. That doesn't really matter. This will just change your mask around. I'm going to hit OK and take just the normal uh, linear gradient option here and go onto this and hold shift sometimes so it makes a nice straight. No, for this tutorial we don't need to actually. Okay, and I'm going to do it opposite wise. So basically going to go from white into black here. Let's do that again. So it's just a bit softer. And again, sometimes I do this a few times till I feel happy with this. Yep, something like that. That is actually good enough. So I just do a little gradient reflection on this. Just go disable. So you see it has a bit of an effect here. From the top, it's going, the light is going down actually. So it should actually be a, a little bit less at the top than at the bottom. Okay, then also I'm going to enable the layer mask so we can see again the effect and also disable and effect again. You can obviously also take the opacity down a bit. So like I said, this is a bit different for every image. Then also on the mask, I sometimes go in with the brush again. I'm also going to work here with control alt together. Keep on holding both tabs together, both key tabs, and then move left and right for the diameter and up and down for your hardness. Okay. Opacity should be set to 10. That's just simply the one on the keyboard. And then with black foreground color, I'm also tapping here slowly in and sometimes brushing just with the mask in onto that reflection right away. So it just fades out slowly. And I can see that I can actually make that reflection still a little bit less. So I'm doing that quite quickly. Take a bit more time when you do these. Right, like so, a little bit more over here. Again, let's have a look here at my before and after. So that was a bit more subtle, a bit smaller as well than the one that we have currently. Okay, but you guys get the point of how I create the fake reflections and these highlights here as well. So let's do also the last one over here. I'm going to create a new layer again. Just right here also ref 4. So we know that is our last reflection here. And that I would continue right away over here. Put here an anchor point. And then go all the way down like this. Okay, and yeah, this will depend on how it will look at the end. One over here, and then maybe someone over here. So that is also up to you how you do the circularization here and how round you want the reflection to be. I think on my other shot, I took a way different approach. Yep, as you can see, this time I went around like this. Sometimes it doesn't look too good, and I try it again. Okay, let's actually continue the path here. And I'm just completing the path. Hit right click, make a selection out of that and accept it. We can actually turn this one off. And on ref, uh, reflection 4 layer, just with the marking tool inside of the selection again, I'm going to say fill with white and accept that. And then obviously take it down all the way till I think, yeah, that kind of suits here with my top part. Then again, create a mask. B for the brush. And let's work with like 50% opacity. And I'm just slowly brushing it out. And also remember to brush it out on top of here because that will look real. So I'm going to press double zero on the keyboard, getting 100% brush there. Okay. And a little bit more. Yeah. Zoom out a little bit. And that's kind of my reflection. It doesn't look too good. Sometimes, like I said before, I would do this one or two times until I'm happy with the reflection. I think my previous one looks a bit better than the one that we've just created. But you guys get the point of how to do it. Also, what I sometimes do, if this edge is simply just a bit too hard, I go back onto the normal layer, not the mask, and select here the smudging tool, or blur tool also. Smudging tool might be a bit too intense. And then what I do is go here just with 20% opacity, and make this a little bit smaller, my brush. 
and simply just brush here over the reflection and only over the part that we've created with the path. Maybe you can do this a little bit harder though, 40%. Also depends on the top part here, how strong that is blurred already. Okay, and just continue here on the edges over the lines. Just to break that reflection a little bit more into the car body. Let's zoom out, and you guys can see it does change a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay, but that's basically it, how I create these reflections. Again, the highlights and the soft reflections here on the car light. And you guys can spend ages and hours and hours of doing this. This totally depends on you, how much you want to add and where and what you want to put in some highlights or some fake reflections. Okay, so that's it for creating fake reflections onto your car lights. Again, remember, this is an easy technique. You can apply it to many different images. And also if you're doing car, complete car composites, you can also use it for that. So if you guys like this content, like always, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Share it with all your buddies who are new in Photoshop and especially car retouching or send them over to our website at retouchpro.com. Yeah, thanks again guys. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you all in the next tutorial. Bye bye. And if you want to see some more tutorials, then you should check on the right side. But I can't think for shit. Anyway, <laughs> here's some more tutorials on the right. Some popular ones and some that we find really amazing from the channel. Yep, just click away.